Climate change is the result of increasing greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Part of the greenhouse effect is natural. There's a natural presence of carbon dioxide and, and water vapor and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. The problem with carbon is we've got too much of it going out the smokestacks and out the tailpipes of our cars and the planet is basically as on a whole warming up. One of the things that I've in particular been looking at is how it affects the evaporation of water from both the land and the lakes. So there's really a trade-off between the amount of precipitation that goes into the basin and the amount of evaporation that goes out. You look at time series plots of evaporation in the Great Lakes over the past 40, 50 years, evaporation rates are going up, uh, temperatures are going up, precipitation rates on the lower lakes appear to be going up as well. Even without forecasting, we can see that there are significant trends going on. So it's really a question of which of those changes is greater and uh, that, that affects the net amount of water that's available to go into the lakes and that in turn affects the lake levels. The, the range of impacts of water levels, you know, in terms of the shipping industry, in terms of the ecosystems, water intake structures, flooding. If we assume that the climate is going to stay the same over the next 20, 50 years, we could make very inaccurate forecasts about not just what water levels are going to do, but what the impacts of water level dynamics might have on human and environmental health. Climate change is going to influence ice cover, and there are many fish species that uh, their eggs incubate under the ice. Another climate change effect may be water levels. Water levels are, could have impacts on spawning habitat and nursery habitat. We're looking at uh, the rates at which wetlands whether they be created or in the case of Old Woman Creek wetland, for example, natural wetlands, how much carbon are they accumulating on a yearly basis? And what we're finding is that wetlands are the best system for grabbing the carbon out of the atmosphere by the plants, but hanging on to it. I think that's actually the biggest thing that people can do, is adapt and manage well to these changes and stay informed as to what's happening. If you are designing a a new building, you might make it more energy efficient. Nature provides services to us that otherwise we have to spend enormous amount of monies and formal technology to solve. And so if nature can clean up our water, if nature can prevent floods, if nature provides the biodiversity, those are all economic values that are extraordinarily important. If you're involved in creating a wetland anywhere, you're actually taking a little bit of carbon out of the atmosphere and storing it on a long-term basis, and that's good.